Hello, welcome to a short little uh, introductory video for the New Testament intro class. Um, I, I wanted to just make a, a quick video introducing myself to you. Hopefully I'm in frame and stuff. Uh, by now you've done, or most of you have done, the first assignment. Uh, the first three assignments really are introductory stuff to the New Testament introductory class, so I won't be having any discussion uh, boards for them. But, and anyway, um, I just wanted to let you know that uh, hopefully uh, you all have this book right here. Um, there's a number of different uh, New Testament books uh, that I could have chose, cho chosen from, but, uh, you know, I was asked to do this a little late, so I didn't have a chance to um, really do an in-depth overview of all the possibilities, but I've, I've had this one for a while. Um, I think it's uh, really easy to understand and um, the layout's pretty good and so I want I decided to go through this I think uh, for an intro introductory level class I think this is one of the best ones to do um, and also you have uh, this one by Ninja Gupta uh, Beginner's Guide to New Testament Studies this short book um, obviously takes you through a number of New Testament studies issues that scholars like to debate that um, you should be aware of. I think they're very interesting and it'll help you understand the New Testament more. Uh, but at the same level, at the, at the same time, um, this, is, this is really just kind of gives you a heads up for the, the more higher level issues that you would get to once you understand and it kind of get a good handle on the New Testament itself. And like I said, this is a no, uh, New Testament intro class, so that's, that's really going to be the focus. Um, obviously, another thing you want to have on hand is obviously a New Testament, you know, a Bible. Um, the way to do this course, um, again, any intro course is a little problematic because the best thing you can do is to kind of give a general overview of everything. Um, so we won't be able to go into a lot of detail about the Gospel of Mark or, or Romans. And so, to truly understand any one of these uh, New Testament texts, you really have to spend time really munching on each one individually and reading it separately and really grasping it. Um, what this course will, will simply do is to kind of open the door to that New Testament world, give you a, an understanding of what the main themes are, what the main issues are, what the main things to look for in each New Testament letter or book are. And then it's really going to be up to you to kind of investigate and explore that world on your own. But hopefully if I do a good job, you'll have a good, good overview of everything. And so therefore, as you've already looked at the syllabus, I'm not going to go through the whole syllabus, but I've, I've kind of broken down the course into three different modules. Uh, you have the Synoptic Gospels and Acts. The Synoptic Gospels are Matthew, Mark, and Luke. <clears throat> John is a gospel, but it is very different. So I'm going to have us look at John when we look at the other writings of John. So this first module is going to be the Synoptic Gospels and Acts. And as you can see, there's some introductory uh, chapters and whatnot that you'll read from the textbooks. But also what I'm going to do, um, I do want you to try to read the actual New Testament <laughs> texts as well, not just read a textbook about the book, uh, the New Testament. Um, so I would highly encourage everyone, as much as they can, when we cover Mark or Galatians or Romans or Hebrews, try to take the time on your own to sit down and actually read that book all on its own to kind of get a flavor for what's in there. Um, maybe after you read the New Testament in Antiquity chapter and... Uh, the assignments that I'm going to get, have you do, uh, make sure to take the time to read the whole thing and see how it all fits together. I think it, it'll be well, well worth it. Now, what I'm going to try to do uh, with every one of the 27 New Testament books, um, I'm going to pick out a number of passages in each one and make sure you read those, pa at least read those passages and answer the questions I'll, I'll, ha I'll give to you for them um, to I'll kind of show you firsthand some of the unique things about each New Testament book. So uh, when we do the Gospel of Mark, you'll be reading uh, the chapter from the textbook. Um, 
and then I'll pick probably three passages from Mark that I'll ask you to read um, and answer questions to, and I'm, I'll probably give you some some of my own written explanation of that passage that'll kind of walk you through the passage, just to, to make sure you, you have an appreciation for what Mark is doing or what Matthew's doing or what Paul's doing in his letters. Um, and by doing that, uh, like I said, you'll have a better uh, appreciation not only for each individual book in the New Testament, but also you'll have you'll have a, a, a pretty decent grasp on what each book is focusing on and what it's trying to teach and whatnot. Um, and so you see the three modules there um, on the, in the, in the um, what do you call it, syllabus. Uh, Synoptic Gospels and Acts will be module one. Module two, I've labeled the letters of Paul. That being said, as we'll find out, um, some of the letters in that section are what they call disputed letters, whether or not Paul himself actually wrote them or whether it was somebody else. We will touch upon that issue and why scholars debate it, but um, traditionally they are understood to be letters of Paul, well, knowing, well, knowing full well that there are a few that are a little iffy, but we're going to put them there anyway. And then the final module is what I call the general letters and the Johannine writings. Basically, that's the writings of John, which would be the Gospel of John, Revelation, 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, and then as well as uh, James, the Peter letters, Jude, Hebrews, the rest of them. They'll go in that module. Um, and the, the key is just to keep up with uh, the assignments as we go along. Every yeah, You're going to have an assignment due every three days or so. Um, and then at the end of each module, we'll have a test. So there won't be a midterm and a final. There'll just be three tests, one for each module. Um, I think that's a, an easier way to, to handle it. Um, and so, anyway, that's kind of how we're going to do it. Um, we'll see how the end of the semester goes. You know, after Thanksgiving, we don't meet, but then we don't meet anyway. Um, I'll, I'm, at this point, I have that final test for right after you you take the Thanksgiving break, and then you'll be done by December 1st and get it all the way. So you'll have um, the, the three tests, the uh, various assignments that you, they'll walk you through everything. And then also, with each biblical book, when we cover it, I'll have uh, something on, on, the, on the discussion board, a, a question of what you've read, you know, I'll ask you to explain what you feel is the point of this certain passage or whatever. And in that discussion board, um, I want everybody to kind of contribute and, and give your thoughts and maybe respond to other people. And um, that's kind of more of an open forum to discuss, kind of like what we would have in a classroom. But this way, if you if you do that, you will you'll get credit for it. It's it's fifteen percent of your grade as long as you you know give. Give your thoughts when asked. You'll you'll get the fifteen percent. Now, obviously, if you if you only answer half the time on the discussion board, you'll get about eight percent. But it's pretty much a, a gift for you. Fifteen percent you'll have if you just take the time to respond and kind of interact on that. Um, so I think um, that is uh, the what the course is going to look like. Now um, you all uh, just did uh, that first assignment which I think is uh, pretty interesting. It gives you much needed background historical information on the world in which the New Testament takes place, the first century and the events leading up to it. Um, and it really is interesting. It really is a fascinating thing. I hope you enjoyed um, doing it. The big thing to realize that you really get from the, the chapter two questions that you did is the events during the intertestamental period from Alexander up to um, the time of Jesus really important to, to realize, uh, particularly the, the events of the Maccabean War, the, the Antiochus Epiphanes IV. He's going to be uh, a major figure. You're, you're going to want to know about that whole event, the, about Antiochus Epiphanes and the Maccabean War, because it, it, it impacts how you understand a number of things in the Gospels. I'll, I'll just give you one example right now. Um, in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, what we call the triumphal entry. When, when Jesus comes into Jerusalem a week before he gets crucified, he comes in riding a, 
a donkey. They're waving palm branches. They're welcoming Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We, we, we see that in Easter pageants all the time, but what does that mean? Well, when you realize that during the Maccabean War, after the Maccabees rose up and fought against Antiochus Epiphanes, who in their minds was, you know, the equivalent of Hitler, trying to exterminate Judaism, trying to, you know, impose, have him, ever have the Jews worship him as God, they fight back and they defeat him. And when he backs off and, and leaves the area, Jew, we know in, in the book of Maccabees, uh, Judas Maccabeus and his followers come riding to Jerusalem on a horse, not a donkey, but a kind of a victory horse, and they come out, they're waving palm branches, they're singing psalms, and the first thing that Judas Maccabeus does when he gets into Jerusalem, he goes to the temple and he cleanses the temple. He gets rid of the, the desecrating sacrilege, the idols, um, and he proceeds to cleanse the temple. Now, he's not the Messiah, but he, in the Lord's name, has accomplished this great victory. If you know that, and then you put yourself in the, in, the, in the mindset of being a first century Jew in Jerusalem during that Passover in 30 AD, you, you, you heard these rumors about some prophet in Galilee who might be the Messiah. And it's Passover. And what do they celebrate at Passover? When God liberates his people from foreign oppression. Right now you hate the Romans, and that's what you're hoping for. And all of a sudden, this prophet from Galilee who might be the Messiah, you see him come into riding Jerusalem, riding a donkey, um, which has echoes of a, a prophecy in Zechariah, which talks about the coming king riding a donkey. And people are waving palm branches and singing psalms. They think that this guy might be the Messiah. And then what do they expect the Messiah to do? Just like Judas Maccabeus, come into Jerusalem and cleanse the temple of foreign, you know, defilement. But then the shocker comes is when Jesus comes into the temple, and when you really read it, despite the little subtitles in some of your Bibles, he doesn't cleanse the temple. He trashes the place, and he quotes Jeremiah, and Jeremiah is famous for condemning the temple and saying it's going to be destroyed. And so right there, reading the triumphal entry scene and the cleansing of the temple scene, if you know this history of Antiochus Epiphanes and some of the Old Testament background, you realize that the whole scene is set up to where the Jews are expecting Jesus to come in, pick a fight with Rome and destroy Rome and cleanse the temple. And instead, what he does is he comes in and he condemns the temple. And when asked about whether or not to pay taxes to Rome, he basically says, yeah. <laughs> it throws everything on its head. It makes you rethink about what's going on in the Gospels and what they're presenting. But we'll get, we'll get to that when we get to that. So... Anyway, the first two chapters, um, I think, are important because it emphasizes the, the, the need to read the New Testament from that first century perspective. Try to get in the sandals, if you will, of those people, of the original hearers, and, and read and understand these, these texts from that perspective. Um, and then also the second chapter, which talks about um, the, the, the Hellenistic period, the intertestamental period that leads into the first century, that's also very important. The stuff about Herod and his sons are also pretty, just helps you root these, these um, the New Testament texts in that time period. And so um, I think you'll, uh, hopefully you'll enjoy the class and um, just keep up with the homework, um, hand it in on time, and I'll, I'll make sure to uh, respond in the discussion boards and with your homework. I'm not, I'm probably not going to make a video a lot but every now and then I'll try to make one to try to tease out some of these ideas that I think is, is just best to just um, get across via speaking. So anyway, hopefully you'll enjoy the class and um, I'll be looking forward to grading all your work and hopefully, um, well, you'll, you'll feel it's worth it. All right. See you later. Bye.